Hey y'all, it's Jess. Welcome back to my channel for another video. So today I have some exciting updates to share with y'all. I have had some work done around my property, so I'm gonna fill y'all in on what's going on. And then also we're gonna do my April garden tour. So today is April 15th. It is officially our frost-free date and I've been doing a lot. So I've been having some work done around my property. As you all know, I've been having an issue in my backyard with some drainage. So I've installed the drain. I've also had some contractors come out and do some work. So I'm gonna insert a few clips and explain what is getting done basically, and then how it turned out. So I'm so excited. It's like 78 out here today. It's a gorgeous day. So let's go ahead and get right to it. I've got some gorgeous things to show y'all. Good morning y'all still cold and rainy here in north carolina we are about 43 degrees today my contractor just came and marked out the entire area on the back side of my fence where we're going to be creating a new bed which i'm excited about yes i won't see it from my house but i need this fixed so basically they're going to come in and fill in all the areas that are starting to erode away yes they're bringing in more dirt y'all i'm so over dirt but i'm ready to have this fixed so do y'all see this and there's another big one right here so they're going to fill in all of this regrade it and then on the back side here's what the back side of my fence looks like so i do have a gate that exits from the back side and then from the gate all the way around they're going to regrade this area with some fill dirt and then come in with a really really thick layer of hardwood mulch so that it won't wash away y'all can see how much water runs out of here so that's why i installed the drain they're actually going to lower my drain just a little bit insert a bowl to help slow the water down and then fill all of this in with fill dirt hardwood mulch and then we're going to plant some erosion control plants so i'm excited about it he did state that a retaining wall is not required for this type of slope so i'm going to go with what the expert says why build a wall they're super expensive by the way but why build a wall if nobody's going to see it back here and it's not required so I think it'll be a good fix. Y'all can see those blue strings tied around that tree. That actually marks my property line. So these two posts right here are also on the property line. This is the original fence line from, I guess, before the neighborhood was even built. So I do have quite a bit of space here, which I think I might come in and just do a row of like big evergreens because they may, fingers crossed they're not gonna do this, but they may be building 480 houses in my backyard next year. So. Fingers crossed that doesn't happen. There's been talk about it since last year. So I would love to have that extra layer of privacy if it does happen. All right, y'all, update on the backyard fence project. Look, oh, it looks so good. So basically what they did was they filled in all of the slopes. They regraded this whole back slope, put a really, really thick layer of mulch down. And then they also added these nice big boulders to help hold everything in. And then they put down a layer of seed and then straw over it. And let me show you what the back looks like. I can actually walk over here now. This is so nice. So here's the back view. So my drain actually used to end right here. He extended it all the way down so the water will run out into the woods. And I have plenty of room to come in here and plant with the erosion control plants. I'm so excited. And then here on the inside of my fence, they did also add in some fill dirt as well as mulch just to try and like level this out just a little bit. I'm still gonna come in and build it up a little bit higher, but y'all remember how steep this slope dropped off where I have these two large panels here. So I'm so glad that this is a lot more even and I can just go ahead and make my beds. Oh, it's gonna look so good, y'all. I'm so excited that this part is done. And then back here, they also added some more dirt. So they built up my back corner here where the drain was. They also built up along here just to close up any gaps all the way down the fence line. And then I'm not sure if you guys can see because the rain has kind of washed away the marking paint. But if you can see this white outline that runs just like where my finger is, this is where he's marked out that I need to just dig out more of the clay and compost and kind of build a berm back here so basically i'm going to come in and just build this up 
really, really high so that my trees are not sitting so far above grade. But oh my gosh, y'all, it feels so good to have these gaps closed in. All right, y'all, so let's get into the tour. This is what my front bed is currently looking like. And oh my gosh, I'm so in love with it right now. Everything is looking so lush and green. We did just get a slight little rain, so all the colors are popping. All of my perennials are starting to pop through and look at my daffodils. Oh, I had to make sure I got a shot because they are starting to fizzle out just a little bit. I literally wait for this show every year and I'm so happy to see their happy little faces. Like, let me zoom in. Look at that bloom. Isn't that gorgeous? I just love that like cream colored center and that pretty white flower. Like, oh, it's just so pretty. And I'm so happy with how they're starting to naturalize. I do have a little bit of a bare area right here, which I'm debating whether or not I want to divide some. So you see how like this clump is kind of like, it's like three separate clumps actually, which I'm happy with, but I think I want to like fill in this gap right here. But also, it does give a clear path for Rosie to shine through and she is just glowing, holding her spot. So I don't know y'all, y'all leave me a comment. Let me know if you think I should divide them or not, but just wanted to make sure that I started off with that before they fizzle out. So I have done some updates to this bed. You guys did see in my last video that I planted up my front border with some annuals. We did have two harsh freezes last week where I had to come out here and cover them up with some landscape fabric. And unfortunately, one of the nights I forgot to come out here and they did get a little bit nipped by the cold. So originally I did have all purple planted here along my front border and I decided to switch it up, y'all. I changed my mind. Y'all know how I do, I like to switch things up. So I decided to go back and get some orange ones, which I just planted yesterday and they're actually starting to open up. So it's exciting. So now I have orange, purple, orange, purple, orange, purple alternating the whole way down, which I think is gonna be gorgeous. So a few of the purple ones did get nipped by the cold, which I decided to just leave them in the ground like this one here you can see it has a little bit of a frost burn on it um, same thing with this one here I think this is actually the worst out of all of them but the ones that I popped out of the hole where the orange ones went in I did look at the roots and the roots look super fine so I did pot them into containers I am rehabbing them and I'm going to plant them somewhere in my backyard so the purple will be going somewhere else, but I think this is just gonna be so colorful. And then for my middle row, I did plant some Senecio, which I was super worried about these as well because they don't like to stay wet. And we've just had so much rain, but they seem to be doing fine. So hopefully we're past our like super frost and wet season. I know we're probably gonna get some more rain next month, but I'm thinking they'll do okay. And then over here, let's just start back where I normally do. This big clump here is actually three day lilies that I potted up a couple years ago and decided to plant them all in the ground. I always get questions on why this is so big. It's because it's actually three plants. So that has come back beautifully. I cannot wait to see them bloom. They don't bloom until like late June, July-ish. So I'll be sure to do a video then. I do have a mum coming back here, wonderful. Cannot wait to see that bloom. And then look at my planter, y'all. All of my dahlias have opened up. They are so gorgeous. I love the color here. And look, looks like I have two more buds getting ready for them. Oh, there's another one there. So this will keep reblooming throughout the entire season. And if they need dead hitting, I can easily just come out here and snip them off. But loving all of the color there. Up here in my planters, I decided to leave my trailing pansies just because they still look so good, you guys. I just don't have the heart to pull them out. I probably will come and pull them out probably like in May-ish and plant some annuals. They are a little bit woodsy because again, we just got a rain. So they'll perk back up, but I just love all the color up here. So, so pretty. And then down here, I do have some perennial mums coming back. I am in the process of removing the rest of my ajuga here. And I'm actually going to transplant some of it to my backyard on the slope to help with erosion control because that is a good erosion control plant. Any type of ground cover will help hold that soil in place. Um, I'll go ahead and talk about my pots here. These are three hydrangeas that I overwintered in my garage and they came back beautifully. This one in the center here is a City Line Mars doing great. These two on the outside are my annual hydrangeas that came back. I didn't even think they were gonna come back, but I'm so happy they did. I love their red stems, they're so pretty. This one over here is struggling a little bit because like if you can see here, all of this right here is dead. I think it has something to do with all, y'all see all these worms. Something hatched in this pot and it was a ton of worms. So I just came out here and dusted it with a whole bunch of seven dust. It took care of the issue, they're all dead, and I think I'm just gonna pop it out and repot it and it'll be fine. So 
otherwise that is that back here while I'm back here, I'll go ahead and talk about my little swoop over here. This is my giant sun and substance hasa. I finally got an ID on this hasa, y'all. Y'all did see that I divided it last fall and it has just come back so beautiful and it looks like it's gonna be just as big as it was before. So happy with that. And then below it, I do have three hyacinth bulbs that I picked up on clearance. They're starting to fizzle out. I'm just waiting on them to absorb all of the sunlight that they can. I'll wait for them to get nice and yellow and then I'll just cut them back down to the base. So that's it for this back corner. Let me go back around the front swoop. All right, so picking up where I left off, this is my blue globe spruce and y'all, I am so happy that this is starting to color back up. So this had originally turned completely green and I realized that it wasn't getting enough sun. So now that we're starting to move more towards the summer months, it's starting to get more sun and get its blue color back and it's also putting out so much new growth. Do y'all see those tips? Oh, I'm so happy. Like that is just nice confirmation that it likes where it's living. So happy with that. I do have two Autumn Joy Sedum coming back here. I love that tight mound of green. These do not bloom until like August. So they'll come back and bloom. I'll be sure to give you guys an update on those. Euonymus back here is doing beautiful. I do have a few more grape hyacinth bulbs dying back in between. Still have my boxwood here that will be transplanted to the backyard. It was just planted here temporarily to overwinter. I have some anemone coming in here. And then Rosie is still chilling, just glowing in the sunlight. She does need a little bit of a pressure wash though. We're gonna have to give you a bath, Miss Rosie. She's still holding her spot to mark where I do not need to plant. And then I do have some salvia. This is purple salvia that will come up. Oh, all the perennials coming back just makes me so happy, y'all. Um, kept off at the end with another boxwood that will be transplanted to the backyard. And then here in the center, I have my lungwort. It is starting to come out of bloom. These bloom sweet little purple flowers in early spring. So those will like die back and it'll just be nice. Like, let me give it a close up. This nice speckled foliage, which y'all know how I feel about my speckled foliage if you've watched any of my houseplant videos. Still a thing for me. Um, my two hydrangeas here, I cannot remember what variety they are, but they are struggling, y'all. I think they really got zapped by those cold temperatures we had back in December, and there's just no life in these branches. Like, they just keep snapping off. They're completely dead. And so what I've been doing is just picking them back to where I can't snap it anymore. That's where it's still alive. So I was thinking about going back and just giving it a nice harsh prune while I can, just to give it a nice shape. And that, unfortunately, probably will, like sacrifice my blooms for this year which is fine it's a little bit sad but I just want a healthy plant so that's a little bit sad I do have my autumn oh my gosh y'all my autumn frost hosta has come back so beautiful and look look at that with little raindrops still on the leaves that is so beautiful this is hands down my favorite hosta and I get so excited when it comes back every year and I'm thinking about dividing it this year do y'all remember how small this was when I first planted a couple years ago it is just coming back bigger every single year and I'm so, so happy with it. I do have another one coming in over there. So I probably will be dividing these because I want some more in my backyard. Over here, I have a tater tot arborvitae doing great. It's not dying. Like y'all know how I was having an issue with this area last spring. I'm so happy that this one has survived. I have two boxwoods that's putting on a bunch of new growth, doing great. My cryptomeria here, still struggling, y'all. I think what I'm going to do is dig it up and move it to the backyard because I just think it's not getting enough sun here. This entire back row just is full shade all day long. So I think that might be the issue. So that will be coming out eventually. And then one last Arborvitae tater tot ball over here. And then let me show you my planter. Y'all ignore, I still need to pressure wash. Like the paint is starting to chip off. I need to pressure wash and respray paint in another video. But I did plant this up with a hibiscus and it is loaded with buds like do you see all of these oh I cannot wait to see those open up it's gonna be so pretty I will come in and do a nice pressure wash and cleaning and decorate video later do, like do y'all see that nice coat of green from all the pollen oh so gross so yeah I will be cleaning and decorating in another video so stay tuned for that let's move on to my ring over here all right so last but not least under planted here I have some lamb's ear which I'm not quite sure what's going on with this one here. This was like my bare area. I did divide some of this and move it to fill it in last year and it was a complete ring. 
I'm thinking that one got nipped by the cold in December. So I might just cut out that area, divide some more just so this can continue to fill in. I do have a few tulips that are, y'all, these have been in the ground so long. What is that coming up out of the ground? I'm just gonna let you do your thing. Y'all see that? I don't know what that is, but anywho, this is just foliage. No blooms come up on them, so I'll just dig those bulbs out eventually. Come in and mulch this bed once all the pollen is done dropping. And then this is my gorgeous emerald green arbovitae. It has been in the ground almost six years now. I planted it from a tiny little baby. It was about the height of this boxwood when I planted it. Um, so I was thinking about this a couple days ago, y'all. This is actually the first plant that ever went in the ground on my entire property. I had nothing here when I moved in. There were no beds, not a single bush, tree, shrub, or anything. Actually, I'll take that back. My maple tree behind me here was the only tree here on the property. So I didn't plant that one, but this is the very first plant that I planted coming in. So it's a little bit sentimental for me, and I'm so glad that I did not lose it last spring. And then down here, I have my hedge of euonymus, which are coming in amazing, y'all. Like, do y'all see how big these have gotten? This one down here has gotten mowed over three times, so I think I'm going to put some kind of, like, fencing around it so everybody knows not to mow over it. Poor little thing. It was coming back nice and full, and then it got cut down. So I'm going to baby that one back, but they are so full and lush, and I think I am going to come in and do some trimming on them just to give them a little bit of shape and help them to branch out some more. I have a limelight tree on standard here doing well. It looks like it did get nipped by some of the cold damage here. I'll just pop those ends off, but I love this tree when it comes in bloom. So, so pretty. Still have not planted my tree ring here. I haven't decided what I want to plant this year. I do have some perennial hookra, if you can see that little red one popping up there. So. That's exciting, but they are planted in a ring around the entire tree, and I normally come in with some annuals around the border, so I need some suggestions. Y'all leave me a comment down below what you think I should underplant this tree with. It does get full sun in the afternoon coming from this direction, and it is in full shade the remainder of the day on this side, so I need something that's kind of versatile. Um, I was thinking maybe some petunias. I think they still would get enough light to do well. The begonias did not do good at all last year, so definitely not doing those. But yeah, y'all, leave me some com comments down below and let me know what you think I should plant. Down along my driveway, I still have my Anna's Magic Balls doing amazing. In between them, I do have some clearance hyacinth bulbs that I picked up and just popped them in the ground, just waiting on them to absorb all the sunlight that they can to feed the bulbs to bloom next year. So once they're done, I'll just cut them back down to the base and they'll be gorgeous. I'll come in and mulch this. And y'all see the mulch is ready to go. Mulch sale has hit. If you aren't aware, Home Depot is currently running their sale. Lowe's has ended. Mulch at Home Depot is five for 10, as well as the um, garden soil is five for 10 as well. So stock up now while you can. And then down here in my mailbox bed, everything is doing phenomenal, y'all. I just love how low maintenance this bed is. This is probably one of my favorite beds just because I hardly have to do anything and I don't really have to water it that often. I have an Anna's Magic Ball planted here. I transplanted this a couple years ago from like my hedge over here so that I can have access to get back there. It's doing great. I have a fluffy gold arbovitae planted in the center of my container, underplanted with some calabrocoa, which is a little bit wilted because of the rain, but this will fill in the vase and be so, so pretty. I think this is going to be the last year that I keep this in the pot because I don't want the root ball to get too big. So these will be transplanted to the backyard. My abelia here, y'all, it is doing amazing. I did do a slight trimming on this just to give it a little bit of shape because it was looking a little bit wooly, but I am loving this color. Like, do y'all see that? So, so pretty. I just, I love all the color in this bed. I have a barberry coloring up nicely down here. Same repeat planting here with a fluffy gold arbovitae and the caravacoa. And then I have my two Carissa Hollies doing great. So just love how low maintenance this bed is. And then over here on the other side of my driveway, this is my barberry bed, and I am just in love with all of the color over here. It just looks like a rainbow. This is exactly what I had envisioned. I'm not sure if you guys watched the video of when I actually planted this bed up. When I dug it out, I did pop in an inspo picture. It looks very similar to this. So project has been executed. However, I have done some transplanting over here. So I originally had my butterfly bush planted in this area here. It was getting too big and like starting to grow out into the street and I didn't like the combination of colors mixed with what I had here so I dug that out. I did pop in a soft touch holly here. I keep wanting to say Carissa holly. This is a soft touch compact holly and I know it looks a little bit rough 
This was actually transplanted from my backyard. It was planted along my patio on the side where I'm like neglecting everything because all of those plants will be moving for the patio extension. Popped it in here as so I am gonna baby that back to health so that'll be nice and green and I think it's the perfect size to fit underneath my Japanese maple. Look at my Inaba Shadar, y'all. Do y'all remember this was just a little Charlie Brown tree when I first planted it and it has just leafed out so beautiful. I'm still in my feelings about my trash guy knocking off all the branches that were on this side because it looks so lopsided. I have been considering cutting off this branch here, but I just feel so bad because this is such a healthy branch. Like it looks so beautiful, but I think if I were to like trim it up, it would help even out the shape. I don't know. I do have plans to transplant this to my backyard at some point. So it's just gonna stay. I just love all the color here. I do have a barberry down here. Down here in my elephant planter, I have a double petunia, which, ooh, it's super welted. I wish it was like more perky to show y'all, but I just love that deep grape color. Cannot wait to see that fill in. You put your branches back like how you were. So sorry, let me not mess up your, your formation here. And then right here I have an abelia, which needs to be shaped. I have two barberries planted underneath this branch here. So pretty, I love, like, look at that color, y'all. It's just like a rainbow effect. I love it, so, so pretty. Another abelia back here that needs some trimming. I have a barberry tucked under there. That one's actually a red barberry starting to color up. And then a burgundy barberry here, euonymus. This is a variegated euonymus and looks like I need to do some trimming. It's got some areas, you see this over here, that are starting to revert back to solid. So I'll trim those out so this will not revert. And then a barberry here. So that is pretty much it for the barberry bed. I do need to come in and mulch. I need to mulch all of my beds, y'all. I'm just waiting on the pollen to finish. But I do plan on reshaping this bed at some point because I'm not a fan of this, like, I guess it's a spoon <laughs> shape of what I call it. Just not a fan of it. So that will be upcoming later on. On the other side of my driveway, I still have my Anna's Maggage Balls with the hyacinths popped in between, doing great. And behind me, I have my fountain grass coming back beautifully. So I still haven't decided if I wanna actually make this a formal planting bed or not. This bare dirt is where they actually had to dig out to install AT&T Fios, which where I'm standing, they also like they dug this entire section out. I have been babying my grass back to life. I have a few bare areas I still probably need to reseed, but it's just been filling in so great. I'm so happy with it. Um, and then right here, this is actually an iris, which it's never bloomed for me. I just tucked it there just to overwinter it somewhere, and I think I'm going to dig it out and move it to another location at some point. This is a lavender here. I have a euonymus still in its pot, which will be moving to the backyard, and then what looks like a pot of weeds, but it's actually a hibiscus coming back. I just need to get in here and clean it out. So that is that. My limelight hydrangea on standard is doing great. You guys, this is the one that completely uprooted from the storm we had last year. I did come out here and stake it, and I think it's sturdy enough now that I can remove the stakes. I think it'll be fine, but I just love, y'all Y'all know how I feel about my hydrangeas. Gorgeous hydrangea tree here. Let's go ahead and move around to my shade garden, which, Everything over here is coming back so lush. I'm so happy and I just love seeing all the perennials popping up. So my lung work down here is doing great. It's starting to come out of bloom, but these are kind of what the blooms look like on this. They're pink and purple and actually it's loaded with buds. So this might have a show that I can come out here and get a clip for you guys later on. Look at my hookahs, y'all. Do y'all just see that huge pop of color? Oh, I love them so much. They do have a little bit of frost burn on them, just from the two frosts that we had a couple weeks ago. I did not come out here and cover anything on this side, but I think it'll be fine. Like there's a ton of new growth down in here. By the way, these are Hukura guacamole, if I did not mention that. My back row here, I have three distillium that also got nipped by the cold, like their branches were completely bare. If you guys can see here, but they are starting to flush back out in leaf and turn back green. So I'll be happy to see those be full again. In between them, I have two geraniums called Bloom Boom Chocolata coming back nicely. I have my two hostas starting to come in and then my plantain lily. So, so happy with how this front portion is turning out. I do have some weeding to do, it looks like. Yeah, we will do some cleanup and mulch over all these dead leaves, it'll be fine. 
I have a baby lungwort coming up here. This is actually the pup that came off of that one over there. So that one will fill in and do nicely. I have my anemone coming back and then a surviving Hyconocloa. I did have three planted here originally. That one is struggling to come back. I lost that one a couple seasons ago. So I'm trying to decide what I want to plant here. I'm not sure if I want to replace the Hyconocloa or if I want to just do something totally different. You guys leave me some just suggestions. And then over here, y'all, look at my Solomon seal. Oh, do you see those sweet little bells? And look at that strappy pattern on the leaves. I just love this plant so much. I love seeing this come up every year. It's so pretty, so low maintenance. I just love it. I have a praying hands hosta coming in underneath that here. And then my, <laughs> this is an emerald green arborvitae spiral that needs a serious prune job. So you guys stay tuned for that video. I will be filming how I prune and like shape all of my topiaries. So that will be upcoming. I did transplant this and moved it forward earlier this spring. And when I did that, I think I lost one of my hostas because I originally had three. I just have two that have come back. So we'll be repositioning those. I feel like they're just too close together. Um, this is a giant calla lily that got nipped by the cold. So all of its new foliage is looking kind of deformed, but it will continue to grow. And I think it'll be fine later on in the season. Behind that on my back row, I have five hydrangeas that I thought were annual, but they've been coming back every year, but they're just not beefing up, y'all. Like, I think I'm going to dig these out and move them to the backyard and replace them with something bigger. I just need something to fill in this entire space. Ignore my wall. I need to pressure wash so bad, um, which will be coming up. But yeah, I think I need something bigger in this area. And I still want them to be white blooming because on this end, from my air conditioning all the way down, everything in this bed is white blooming, so I consider this my moon garden. So I definitely want them to be white. The little ones I have currently are white blooming. Um, if y'all see down here, you zoom in, you see those peeking up? That is a calla lily coming up. So I do have a regular white blooming calla lily that will fill in this area. I have my brother stuff in hosta coming in beautifully. Like, look at that waffly texture. Love the pattern on those leaves. And then over here, I have another calla lily that's starting to come up, white blooming again. And this is another giant calla lily. And it actually has a bloom, but it got damaged in the cold. So it's a little bit deformed, but first bloom of the season. That's exciting. Um, down here on the front curve, I did pop in some clearance hyacinth bulbs. They're all white blooming. The bulbs are just absorbing all of the sun they can. And then I'll just cut them back once they turn yellow. And then moving along, I have planted some Candy Tough Snowdrift, I think is what it's called. Um, this one came from my front garden. I transplanted it here and I actually had a hosta coming up in the middle of it. So I transplanted the hosta back to that back corner. So if y'all watched my March tour, I said I had a, bat, a bare area. So I think that will fill in nicely. That's a brother stuff in. So it will fill in that entire space back here perfectly. Another woolly spiral that needs to be shaped. Um, and then I have my rhododendron back here that I transplanted last summer. It was super stressed, so I'm not expecting a big show on this this year. I do have a few bulbs that might swell and bloom for me. I'm hoping that it'll regain its strength this year and then put on a nice show for next year. And then another gorgeous hosta down here. I'm so sorry, I don't know the names of my hosta. I'll be more prepared for my next tour for y'all, but it is coming in beautifully. This is like a nice icy blue hosta and it's huge. I have a pinky winky hydrangea on standard tucked in the back corner, which will be locating to the backyard at some point. And then my two topiaries, y'all. <sighs> These have been struggling as well. If you see, they're kind of balding. I'm not sure what's going on. I thought it was an iron deficiency just because like, you'll see this happening on the leaves. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I have been treating it with liquid iron, um, but me and my boyfriend actually came out here in the middle of a rainstorm removed both of these and put them into the garage, took the topiaries out, and I decided to put pot feet as well as pavers underneath both of them. So that is because I ran a drip cord up through the bottom so that now I can put these on bubblers and they'll be automatically watered. That's what this cord is hanging out here. Um, so I won't have to worry about watering them. They won't dry out too much for me this year, but I'm hoping they'll come back. They're still putting on their blooms, so I'm hoping they'll just fill out. Same thing over here, it's a little bit of a mess, but this one is on drip. I just need to hook it up. So 
Let's head to the backyard. All right, so here is what the backyard is currently looking like. Wait for the slam. <laughs> I have so much to update you guys on in this bed. I've done a lot of transplanting. First, I wanna talk about this topiary over here. So this one right here, y'all, I thought I was gonna lose this topiary. It had completely balded. It was so yellow and diseased looking and I just, I panicked, you guys. So basically what I did is I plucked off one of the bad leaves. Let me see if I can find one for y'all. Like, this one here if y'all can see that I took this to the garden center and they gave me a spray and I literally just doused this entire thing in spray and it has just responded so well to its treatment I'm so happy with it do y'all see all of this new growth like all of this has come in in the past I want to say like three weeks or so so I'm just happy it's rebounding it's basically been pushing out all of its bad leaves like its older leaves have been dropping and I've just been coming in here and cleaning them out as they come in because I don't want, or as they drop, I should say, because I don't want that disease to continue to spread. And I've also been like plucking them off <laughs> as you see me cleaning it up, but I'll come back here and finish that after the video. Down in the base of the planter, I did pop in some purple caliber koa, which will fill in the base. I think it's going to be gorgeous. And this one will be hooked up on drip as well, so I don't have to worry about it drying out too much. All right, and then over here in my bay window bed, I did a bunch of transplanting. So I'm gonna try to run through this as fast as I can for y'all. If you remember in my last video, I did state that I was gonna have to move my arborvitae. So I did move it. It did used to be planted back here, which it was starting to grow into my topiary, which needs a serious haircut at this point. So yeah, stay tuned for my trimming video. I will be filming that for y'all. Anywho, I did move my arborvitae out. So now it has proper spacing, they won't be touching. I did also have to move this Stella de Oro Daylily out as well, because it used to be planted back here. So I shifted both out. So now I have three Stella de Oro Daylilies day planted around the base. And then also I had this Asiatic Lily, which I think is orange blooming, if I'm not mistaken. This used to be planted over here. So I transplanted it to this spot, popped in this Daylily, which actually came from Rehab Row. I think this one is Lil Grapeatite or a little grape bet, something like that. It's purple blooming. That's all I know. <laughs> um, so that one is different from the other three, which I think will be fine. It'll fill in this space nicely. I have a blue chiffon rose of Sharon that I trimmed up coming in nicely. And then also, if y'all remember in my last video, I did ask for suggestions on what I could plant underneath my window because I did remove the sunshine anise that was struggling. Y'all gave me some great suggestions. So thank you so much if you commented. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your suggestions. Basically what I decided to do is use what I already have. So I've been shopping my own garden and as you all know, I have been working on getting my patio extended. So these two, well actually these three plants, this one here, this is a beehive holly that needs a serious trim job, ignore that. Um, and then these two back here are compact soft touch hollies same as these over here. Those were planted on the other side. I just transplanted them over here. I think they fill in the space perfectly. So basically what my thought process was is to have the beehive holly and then an L shape of the, the soft touch hollies. I keep wanting to say Carissa and then another beehive planted here, which was already there. So, so that was the design thought process behind this. And this may be moving, I'm not sure, but I like it for now. I did also decide to move my bobo. So the bobo used to be further back, I decided to move it forward so that now it can be centered and I want it to be the focal point of this entire bed. So move the bobo, it's doing great. I did also transplant from Rehab Row a swoop of these four grasses. I don't know the name, I'm so sorry y'all, I cannot remember the name, but these are kind of fun because they actually open and close. So they open during the day and then they close up at night. So I think they add a nice pop of color here. Back in the corner, I have some Asiatic lilies tucked in. Actually, they're tucked in throughout this entire bed. Let me step back without crushing anything. I have an Asiatic pop in there, one there, here, and one down here. So we'll have some pops of orange and pink throughout the bed. And then also, if y'all remember, I did originally have just three Millennium Garlic here. I decided to divide them, so now I have a whole swoop of Millennium Garlic here. So this will be a row of purple. And then down in front of that, I have my White Wands Veronica. 
and down in the very front I planted some orange petunias which I think this is going to be so gorgeous in bloom I know they just look like little green mounds right now but y'all just wait wait till mid June July It is going to be a sea of color and I'm so excited about it I did also add some additional drip in this bed so that's why you see the exposed piping um, I will come in and mulch over it so it'll look great but I did also already have drip in this bed so I decided to add some more just because I had some additional plants coming in so beefed up the drip I do have an afternoon something afternoon daylily planted here which will be transplanting somewhere else not sure yet where um, and another daylily here this limelight tree on standard I am going to be digging it out it's doing the gangster lean just because it was partially uprooted in the storm last year and I never staked it um, but I'm just not happy with its height y'all like the stem has been, like the trunk has been getting thicker over the years, but it has not been getting any taller. So I think I'm going to dig it out and put it into a pot just to give it the height that I really want. So yeah, y'all, that is the update on the bay window bed. I'm so happy with how full everything is looking and I just cannot wait to show y'all it in full bloom. And then over here behind me, this is what I used to call Rehab Row. So this is a bed that I created a few years ago to have a space to plant all of my clearance plants and just let them rehab until they're ready to relocate to their permanent homes in my garden. Um, I am in the process of retiring this bed and making it a formal bed. I do have a video coming up on that soon, so stay tuned for that. And y'all, last year I just let the bed go. So y'all see it's getting overgrown with weeds. I just let the weeds take over. I have been coming out here every evening after work. I do work full time. I'm um, just trying to weed as I can. So I think I've done from here over. I've weeded everything. Looks nice and clean. I've taken out all of the perennials and relocated them. So just need to slowly transplant stuff out of this bed. I do have several perennials still tucked in the front. I have some limelight hydrangeas along the back line that will be going to my neighbor. And then the home shrub arborvitaes will be staying. I have 15 planted in this bed and they're doing amazing. I cannot wait to see them grow in and just make this a nice green wall. So stay tuned for that makeover video. It's going to be amazing. All right, and then for my back fence line, you guys did see earlier that I did have some grading done to fill in all the gaps under my fence. They did also build up this back area where my drain and the dirt was starting to wash away. And y'all, I am just so happy with it. My arbor bodies are doing great. They're putting on new growth and the drain has been working phenomenally. Like we have had three days of just straight downpours and do y'all see any puddling? No, none anywhere. Like the drain has been working phenomenal. I'm so happy with it. So now I'm just ready to come in, pack this area in with a bunch of compost, build the beds up so that my trees won't be so far above grade and just make this, I think I'm, I'm considering making it two tiers. I'm not sure yet, but I just cannot wait to make this a formal planting bed. Look at my gear curl, you guys. Let me zoom in, give you a close up. I am so in love with this tree. Like y'all know how I felt when I planted this. It is putting out so much new growth. I'm so happy with it. So that's doing amazing. All of the emerald green arborvitaes that I've planted over here or transplanted and respaced are doing amazing. Also, my lemon lace elderberries have come back, you guys. I thought I had completely lost these last summer. They had completely defoliated down to bare stems. I thought they were dead, but they have come back this year bigger and better, and I love the pop of color and texture that provide back here. In the center here, I still have my Hinoki Cypress just chilling in its pot. Haven't decided where I want to plant it permanently, but I'll figure that out once I finish making all of my beds. So it's doing fine. And then my other Gyokuro over here is also doing phenomenal. I do have a blue something cypress planted here. It's doing great. It is in its permanent location, so I will just come in and extend beds around here, and all of this will be new planting space. You guys did see they built this area up. Like, do y'all remember how steep this used to slope off? Like, this was a, a really sharp slope. They came in with a bunch of fill dirt to build it up. So basically what I'm going to do is come in with some more compost, build it up just a little bit. It still has to slope just because of rain purposes, but I want to try and even it out just a little bit better to make it easier to plant here. And then my landscaper gave me an awesome suggestion on how I can fill in the gap under here. So I'm not going to spoil that. Y'all just stay tuned for that video. So super happy with how this is forming up. 
Over here, I'm not going to do too much talking. Y'all know I'm in the process of extending my patio. This tree back here will be relocating to my neighbor. And then I have been working on digging out, like all of this used to be a bed and it's just gotten taken over with weeds. I'm just letting it do its thing because it's all going to be concrete. Um, but I have dug out all of the shrubs that were planted along here. I have a few flocks that still need to come out. And then the daylilies will be transplanted. Still debating on whether or not I want to keep my limelight tree here. I'm not sure. I mean, it can't stay here because obviously this is going to be concrete, but I'm trying to debate if I want to keep it in my landscape or give it away. So stay tuned for that. Um, these are all Wygelas that will also be going to my neighbor. She's also taking this Shasta Daisy as well as this um, Spirea here as well. I did have a Spirea planted there. This is actually the Emerald Colonnade that was planted in my planter up front. Just pop it in here until I figure out where I want to move it. It's doing amazing, still pushing out new growth. But yeah, all of this will be cement. So ignore all the weeds. Shrubs will be gone. But I do want to give you guys a close-up on what the blooms look like on these Wygelas. So, so pretty. And I just love these blooms every year. It's so sad that these are going away. I just don't have a plan for them in my landscape. I don't know, y'all. Y'all know how I do. I might switch things up. We'll see if I keep them or not. And then last but not least, y'all know I always save the best for last. This is my limelight hydrangea hedge. I do have eight limelights planted in this bed as well as one macrophylla hydrangea, which is starting to leaf back out, y'all. I was really worried. I thought this one got zapped by the cold as well, but it looks like it's going to push through. I'm just not sure how it's going to bloom, but it's okay. I know the limelights will take on the show, which is perfectly fine with me. Also, my liriope is starting to come back up. I cut that all the way down to the base. So this bed is going to be gorgeous, y'all. I just cannot wait. I need to come in and just do a fresh layer of mulch, hook up my drip, and we will be good to go. So thank you guys so much for watching this tour. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, like it, share it with your friends, leave me a comment down below. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you in my next one.